Welcome back to Wake Up Charlotte Weekend. September 22nd marks the 33rd anniversary of Hurricane Hugo making landfall just north of Charleston, South Carolina. Hugo Center passed over I-77 between Columbia and right here in Charlotte around 5 a.m. as a hurricane. And if you lived in the Charlotte area in September 1989, chances are you have a Hugo story. Now we of course are being joined by our very own Larry Sprinkle, who is the only weather forecaster left in Charlotte who is here during Hurricane Hugo. Larry, how was your experience with the storm? I mean, it was as I look back to 1989, it was pretty outrageous knowing that at that time we never talked about hurricanes coming all the way inland to Charlotte. Uh, and, and back at that time, there were only two of us in the weather department, myself and Steve Raleigh. And so we were both kind of on duty that night, uh, not ever thinking that this hurricane was going to come this far inland. So we kept looking. I remember when I was looking at it right off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina, and I said to Steve, I said, those people have no idea what's going to hit them, which obviously they didn't. Uh, but then the irony was we didn't know what was going to hit us several hours later. So it made landfall and, and we were on the air. Uh, obviously, we started uh, the night before. Uh, Steve did most of that because we just thought the coverage would go until after our newscast 11. And then the storm system moved inland and it kept moving and moving. And so then it was wall, we call it wall to wall coverage. And so he and I were taking turns on the air, only two of us in the weather department. And at the station at that time in the whole building, I think there were probably maybe seven, eight people. So what they decided to do was put the uh, the weather team, the two of us, in the studio by ourselves with the weather computer and one camera. And the rest of the news department, the several who were on the air, were in the newsroom in the old building. Now, we're in a different, a whole different building than what happened at that time. So uh, we kept an eye on it. And, you know, the storm kept moving, getting closer and closer to uh, Lancaster County. Uh, it moved north of Charleston. And Steve decided to take a break and said, Larry, you, you take the coverage from that point. And so I'm on the air uh, in our old studio in the old building watching it move. And I remember the camera was much like this. I was facing the camera over to my left was uh, the big studio with a ceiling of about probably 30, 40 feet up. And right next to us is a tower that's still there, a tower that's about uh, 1,200 feet tall. And from the tower are these big guy wires coming down, coming down off it, big cables coming out, big thousand pound cables to hold the tower up. So I'm on the air watching the coverage, you know, of what was happening and describing, we got some reports of some wind gusts uh, down around Shaw Air Force Base. And I'm looking up and I'm, I'm looking into cameras saying, well, we're getting some high wind gusts. And about that time I could hear something up to my left, I hear kind of a creaking sound, and then all of a sudden this boom, this big push of air, and then it's almost like an explosion beside me, and I kind of was looking at the camera, but my eyes were looking over to the left, and I was saying, well, uh, part of our ceiling just caved in around me at the time. So what happened was one of those big cables hit the roof and pushed part of the ceiling right into the studio, maybe about 10 feet away from me. So not only did the hurricane hit Charlotte, it hit our building as well. Larry, do you think that things that happened after Hugo, maybe lessons learned, you know, in the weather forecasting community, yeah. do you feel like any of that has kind of shaped how we've changed weather forecasting now in Charlotte after 33 years? You know, the lessons learned, things of that nature. I mean, we, we learned a lot, you know, back in those days, we didn't have the technology that we have today. I mean, obviously we had the satellite imagery we could use, but we didn't have the radar technology. So yeah, I mean, our, our coverage has changed because we know the significance of uh, the power of these big storms. And that means we're now on the air until it ends. Not that we weren't at that time, but we're, you know, our coverage, the coverage of it, the technology, the importance of it and for informing people uh, to save lives. And luckily in the Charlotte area, we didn't have the big loss of life extent that, that other areas had. I think it was 67 lives lost totally in Hurricane Hugo. But, you know, the importance of making sure that people are aware and you know, we call it, now we call it weather aware. So if there's a, a significant storm, we're going to be on the air before, during and after.
If someone has just moved to Charlotte or maybe just the Carolinas in yeah. general, whether it's here in the metro or maybe up toward the mountains and yeah. foothills, and they've never been through a tropical system ever, tropical, yeah. her, uh, you know, depression, storm, hurricane, what would be your advice to someone who's never been through one? And, you know, is there a misconception maybe that we don't get impacted here? Uh, up until that point, I mean, you know, we talked about hurricanes impacting coastal areas. So, yeah, that would have you almost expect. Yeah, if you're on the coast, then be aware of the significance of of understanding that you're in a danger zone. And if you're told to evacuate, evacuate, don't hang around, leave when you can. Yeah, I, I think for people who live here in the Charlotte area, the fact that we've we had a hurricane uh, come this far inland and it was once in a thousand year event, but it can happen. Uh, but we also, hurricanes also create other disturbances, tornadoes. Tornadoes can come far inland, so we, we see tornadoes from hurricanes. We see um, high winds. You can still get high wind gusts. You can get thunderstorms created by the hurricanes. So it's, you know, it's an event that, that covers not only where the hurricane center is, but farther out, hundreds of miles away. And, you know, that's what can happen right here in the Charlotte area. Yeah, and we know here locally inland flooding is always a big problem. Without with a us. doubt. I mean, you know, you think back to some of the biggest flood. Florence is a big example of that, that, yeah, you get you can get inundated by these powerful storms and, and the big thunderstorms that, that create the, the amount of rain that you, that you can get at one time. So, yeah, flooding, inland flooding is a major problem. We've seen it, you know, we've seen it in Matthew. We saw it in Florence and we... The lucky thing about Hurricane Hugo in our area, it was not a flood event, it was a wind event. So we didn't get the flooding from it. We've certainly seen in the past tropical storms and hurricanes, the extent of flooding that can come this far inland and even farther away from the Charlotte area. Yeah, just a good reminder, yeah. this time of the year on the anniversary, yeah. people still need to prepare. Larry, we are so lucky here at WCNC Charlotte to have you, that you are still the only person, <laughs> still working in local yeah, TV that was here during yeah, that story. Been hanging around a long time, but yeah, I mean, that was, it's hard to believe it's that many years ago, 1989, and that we can still have major storms, you know, not only hurricanes, but thunderstorms can create a lot of problems, the high winds, the tornadoes, the smaller tornadoes created when you have hurricanes. And, you know, for me personally, um, it, it's always been important to, to be weather aware for everybody. And the importance of, uh, you know, just being here when the storms happen, before it happens, we all have our long hours and, you know, sometimes it can go hours, it can go days. I mean, for Hurricane Hugo, we're literally on the air probably 24 hours straight for that. Uh, and, and at one point, we had to evacuate this building we were in because we were afraid maybe the tower was going to collapse. So we actually had to leave our old WCNC studios and we had a small uh, studio facility in Uptown Charlotte. So we were on the air part of the time up there thinking that, man, that tower is going to come right down the building. It didn't. Uh, but one of the reasons that we're in this building have been since uh, 1991 is the fact that we were thinking that from the, all the damage from the hu Hurricane Hugo, that building, that we needed to have a bigger, stronger, better facility, and that's where, we're, where we are right now. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just one of the examples, right? When you have a big storm come through, oftentimes, you know, you look at your situation, they look at building codes, things like that. We saw that in 1992 after yeah. uh, Hurricane Andrew in Miami. You know, right. they redid all of that stuff. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being yeah. with us here great, on Waco Charlotte here. Weekend. Thank you. That's, you know, normally I'm the person interviewing, but <laughs> it's great to have you to be here as part of this. And then, you know, the, the fact that this is an anniversary that a lot of us who are here will never forget. And, you know, Hurricane Hugo caused a tremendous amount of damage in Charlotte. Thousands and thousands of trees were down. People lost power for over two weeks. Where I live, we also lost power for almost two weeks. Um, so you can have an impact that can affect millions of people. And those of us who were here in 1989, that's something you will never, ever forget. I'll never forget walking out of the station when it, when, when it was light and seeing just this total devastation, trees down. You, when you left and tried to drive away, you couldn't get your way away from the building because of the number of trees down on the street. So it impacted Charlotte like no one could ever have thought. I mean, no one would ever imagined the damage that one storm could do, that a hurricane could come this far inland. Yeah, I think it's a good reminder to people who have that conception that yeah. hurricanes can't come here. They can. <laughs> Not necessarily and, the case. They are they rare, yeah, yeah. but... They don't happen every no, year, no. and they're rare, but they have happened. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank you. Larry. Thank you.